were fun so you were living her dreams and what about yours truly excited to introduce today's guest she's india's first female polo player not only that she also owns the team she is a fashion entrepreneur she is a dj she is a restaurant owner her ridiculous sense of achievement has been all welcome to behind closed doors thank you so much reena for being here behind closed doors and uh, i am in awe right i am literally in awe i was stalking you for a, <laughs> <laughs> for the lack of a better word and you have done you have done everything possible you have achieved so many things in your life and it's such a pleasure to have you here thank right? you so much and we would like to start from the beginning first i would like to go to your childhood so tell us are you a bombay girl in and out tell us about your childhood yes uh, born and brought up in bombay went to alexandra girl school girl school yes okay. all girl school and then went to sydney and then went abroad to study and then this was uh, do you have siblings here? yes i have a younger brother right and uh, of course since the age of 5 i always wanted to be an athlete okay. actually that was my dream to be an athlete athlete but uh, my mom wanted me to become an actress really so since the age of 5 to 20 i she put me into bharatnatyam and kathak so actually classical dancing was something that i did throughout my you know childhood throughout your childhood and did that sort of uh, carve a path for your discipline that you have absolutely so of course i pursued sports in my school uh, but between sports and classical dancing is what made me super discipline um gave me a, a better body uh, you know so have was, you have you seen any of your work in movies as an actor or no i did one uh, i have to say i did one um, so she was very keen so after as soon as i finished 12th i did one um, uh, what do you say music video right you did and uh, that was it i i just i couldn't take that retake so many times and all that i just told my mom i'm sorry i just can't do it was she disappointed with very you? really because as i said her dream was that i became an actress so you were living her dreams and what about yours so i think uh, till school of course i fulfilled my dream as an athlete being on top of uh, you know sports and everything but after college i guess didn't have much i just thought that my mother knew better and uh, i thought i wanted to study actually after that a lot so, so i went to harvard after my 12th really i was a programmer a software programmer where i thought that i mean i was very geek she is she is also a software programmer now i used I to be i really need to write that in your resume no i was just more that i loved study so much that my mom would not be able to get me out of it right so i would still do my classical dancing which i loved and i really thank her for it now that that gave me a lot of base in music in rhythm in everything that i'm doing right now but um, i think as a gujarati girl i was i think it was very obvious that okay till 20 this is what you do and then you get married you get married yeah. and you did get married i did get married at the age of 20 21 was that life something that you thought you wanted i think at that point i don't think i knew better so i was very excited to be very honest and i was like oh wow you know but it was a arranged marriage and uh, i don't regret it you don't regret i don't regret it coming out of that marriage you don't no I mean I don't regret anything in my life but because actually after that is when I actually grew saw the world got exposed but leaving that marriage was that hard for you was very hard it was definitely the first love of my life right and it was hard but you left it because you wanted to pursue your dreams. um I think it just didn't work out because uh, whatever but we both were very young um but I, I want to know what happened when that happened right you you said you don't it didn't work out your parents so by there. then uh, my husband actually supported me to start rinaldi which was your fashion on my fashion thing so yeah. while being married of course i was running my company with his support so that's why i don't even regret it because he was quite a support but then after 2 3 years we grew apart and uh, my company started growing a lot right. so during the divorce i had I was on the top. You were. If you know what I mean. So then I thought that I was only twenty five, twenty six by then, 
and i was like okay i'm going to take my work and you know not sulk and feel bad but and that's when around 26 after a year of my divorce i moved to new york you did yeah i lived for 12 years in new york you left everything in india you have yeah because here. you know i wanted a new start at that time it was a taboo uh being divorced since, since and since. if you're famous so means i was written in the newspaper and i just felt that my family had to take all of that written in the newspaper so i've seen a couple of articles where you are in page 3 the yes. girl with really uh, sky high stilettos is yes. how they describe you yes. right and that was fun to read as a person who's re- reading a gossip article but it would it, it was not kind for you right yes it wasn't it was like oh i you know i'd rather go away but also i went away because i i wanted to grow my business right and at that point america had amazing opportunities and of course i i really flourished So it was a good move. But you like to speak more about your shoe brand that is Rinaldi, right? Yes. How did you start? So as I said, um, I always wanted to do something in design and then when I got the opportunity after I got married, I kind of went to New York, studied because I like to do things which are not done. Right. Um you want to carve a path for yourself. Yes, yeah. You know, that gets me excited that I always want to be a leader. Uh I wanted to do in fashion, but I didn't want to be a sh- clothing designer. Just, just to uh, ask you a question: Were you always this confident at the age of twenty-five? Like, yes. This is what I wanted to do. I think I was confident even in school. You were. Yeah, like it was something which my parents always said to me that, I mean, like you go on stage and why do you you just become something else? You are running a race and you become something else. But I think I got it. Oh, I always had it, and that's what pushed me. And what? Is that something to do with the way you were ra- you were raised? Of course, I I I has to be a part of it because my mother is was really the biggest force. Like right. even in my summer vacation, she'll put me into five different classes. Right. And she's like, your knowledge is great. You know, just learn art also, learn craft also, learn dancing also. So, and because I think we both supported each other. You know, I never said, Mom, I don't want to do it. I'm like, okay, fine, let's do a class, let's do this, let's so do. So you were that. always open to experiment. Yes. Always. Yes. And, and I is- really give that a big, big uh, thing to my mother. Really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then you you went to New York. You yeah. had this shoe line which is doing really well. Yes. And but that also met with failure, right? In the end, I won't call it failure. I would call it end of something that you started. and began something else so would you yes. like to because um, i lot- think i think what happened in the shoe thing is that i did it for 17 years but because the reason i ended and i ended it not selling it but closing it and that was a very big difference when i was really doing very well but i really needed to close it because i didn't have time for anything i mean i didn't even could go no go, not even go to the gym because right. i didn't have partners You were Then doing everything alone. I was doing in a year, four times back and forth from New York, three months here, three months here. I was selling to five hundred stores in New- America. Wow. I was doing shoes for who's who here, but everything became my whole business was custom made. So what happened is that every client wanted to meet me. Right. And you didn't have time. And it went on and on and on, and I was of course making good money. I was getting the fame, but. I wasn't at some point I stopped being happy. So like th- there is a correlation between money, happiness and peace of mind. Oh absolutely, right? absolutely. Like I couldn't play a sport. I couldn't, you know, on the dinner table I was on my computer. When America is awake, I had to be awake. When India is awake, I had to be awake. I think for 3 years I must have slept 3 to 4 hours every day. that took a toll on your health yeah right? health so not much at that point you're young you know you're you want to do ach- you want to achieve everything yeah like you just didn't have time for anything and then you start realizing that all you're doing is making money and fame but is it like really serving your soul uh in the in the era of social media right now you speaking about it really makes me happy because nobody talks about how how sad a life becomes when there is money there is fame but there is no happiness right and, and you read it all the time in ins- on social media right people are talking now more about it right. earlier you were not talking about it you couldn't talk about these things you were not even aware that was right that was you you cannot talk about you how can't talk about it. yeah yes. yeah you exactly you can't talk about uh, oh i have failed or i'm quitting something yeah. and but it's human right every human goes through it and when you talk about the who's who Who right. was your biggest client, and something that we were? I think Natalie Portman uh, wow. was my biggest. Naomi Campbell, who used to come to my store, I mean, from a stylist. Wow, stylist. I think I just have goosebumps hearing that. Yeah, like wow. even I mean, she came to my store, and I wasn't there. 
I and, know. But and there was no, there was no social media or phone. So she signed my book and went. But uh, those were like designing a whole Swarovski shoes for Natalie Portman was amazing. Of course, all the stars here: Shah Rukh, Salman, Kareena. We did. I did a lot of movies. Um, those and was between my twenties, thirties. So it was so you were exciting. Like, you were like living the life. Yeah, I was know? living the life. You have fame. I have money. Yeah, I have everything. Yeah, and then yeah. 2019, you decide to. Yeah, I just I reach. That also took me four or five years from the time I decided because you you are always worried that now it's the company is doing so well. What will I do after that? But luckily, Polo came into my life. It was the, 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 there was Plan B, and we'll go to Polo. But there was a Plan B for no. you. So 2019 and just before COVID. 2019, of course, no plan. But po- I was very active in polo. Right. So. And how did polo start from the beginning? I want to know. So. So I'll tell you, 2011, I moved back from New York. To Bombay. Yeah, and around 10 end and 11. And what was the reason for that? Like- um, actually, my business visa got rejected. Oh. Because at that point, America's economy was down, and they were rejecting single people's vi- visas. So there was, there was no reason. It was just rejected. So I thought maybe, okay, economy is down. Maybe it's time for me to go back. So I moved back and uh, I went to see a game through a friend at the race course. That the was already, race yeah, it was already like a year in that I've come back. Actually, I hated it when, come, when I got back because right. it was just boring and I wanted to go back. I was a little and upset. And the people, were they accepting of you or they were, were they like... I just want to watch a game. Okay. And I said, you did, I just, you, did, you did have friends here in Bombay that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I grew up here. So, right. and when I went to watch the game, I was like, dude, this is damn exciting. Like, wow, I've never seen a game of polo, even though I lived in America. I never went to Hamptons or no, because nobody in my circle played it, and it's a very rare sport. Right. I mean, to hear a female polo player is itself is yeah. unheard of, right? Yeah, it and is. of course, when I'm seeing it, also it's all men rushing and wow. It I was think just... I, for me, a polo has always been about some Rajput guy playing or some Jaipur yeah. player. Yeah. Polo every year. I think it happens at the beginning Absolutely, of the year, right? Yes. And that is common general knowledge. And right. I think we depend on you to tell us more about polo. Yeah, I mean, I'm just like a layman, Gujarati girl going to watch a game. And then I'm like, oh. You are not as humble as you are talking right now. You you have achieved a lot, Rina. No, but so. you, you understand going for a game and right. saying, I, it will be fun to at least give it a shot. Right. Didn't know okay, what goes behind it, how much training you need. But I said, Chalo, at least I want to ride a horse. Right. You know, That's how it started. Yeah, it was and just so what majestic. What was your age at that time? 37, 38. What? Yeah. I mean. I know. And <laughs> the thing is, age has never come into my head. Like you I've started never, to close your business. No, then, yeah, no, I didn't. That time my business was still running. Right. I This was still running. And then you just decided, oh, I want to Yeah, I just, need, I had a little more time that I'd moved back. So I thought like, okay, I'll go at five o'clock in the evening and I ride one or two horse horses riding. and see at least what is this about. Right. So slowly, so I spoke to people there and they said, yeah, yeah, come tomorrow. And I met Suresh Ji, who was really my mentor. And said, of course you can come and ride. I mean, and I went, started two, three days, four, five days. And was like, oh my God, this is so much fun. It was exciting? It was very exciting. And then in a month, I fell. Okay, so, yeah, in a month I fell down. And then I said, oh my God, this is, you know. I I don't want to do this. Yeah, like, you know, you think, like, I have to work also. I have to go in the morning to a factory. And then in the if I fall down, I mean, it, who will run my business? Yeah. So for two three months, that was should I go? Should I not? This that. But it was just calling me because it was so exciting. And then I in a month, by, two three months went by, and I I said oh, whatever it is, and I told Suresh Ji, which is my mentor, I said I really want to do it. He's like, okay, then you have to dedicate. So what I did was six, for a year, six in the morning, three horses in the morning, go to factory means get ready at race course, shower, factory was a low apparel, work, sleeping, like dozing off in the factory a <laughs> little, and then five o'clock back to the horse, three horses in the evening. Just because that was a passion of yours. You never thought you were going to become a polo player? No, 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 I, of course. No, I wanted to be a polo player and I told him that what do I need to do to become a polo player? And I said, just, just to play for fun. Okay, just guide me through the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all, I mean, that, without guidance there... 
वो पता थिंग इज वो पीपल मेकिंग फन ऑफ दिस चॉइस ऑफ योर्स ओह या आई गॉट इवन द किड्स वर लाफिंग व्हेन आई यूज्ड टू फॉल राइट बिकॉज़ आई मीन इट्स लाइक अ आंटी इज गोइंग ऑन द हॉर्स एंड ट्राइंग टू बिकम अ पोलो प्लेयर बट बट यू स्टेड एंड यू स्टेड यू योर विल पावर इज बिगर देन एनीथिंग एल्स एंड दैट्स सो अमेजिंग राइट आई मीन आई थिंक दैट इज आई वुड से नाउ इज आई से इज माय बेस्ट क्वालिटी दैट आई जस्ट डोंट क्विट आई विल फाइंड अ वे यू विल फाइंड आई विल फाइंड दैट्स सुप्रीमली इंस्पायरिंग फॉर मी एज़ वेल बिकॉज़ nobody says this coming out here they are very diplomatic about the things but you have you've spoken about your failures that's amazing yeah. and then you fell down and you go and not once now now i have couple of ribs broken means the thing is any sport or anything you do will have is you know bad and good right and i knew going into that sport that it is a dangerous sport but i don't know i think the thrill and the happiness that sport has given me i don't think anything in my life has given me really yeah i mean the freedom of being on the horse and playing that game for just 21 minutes it's just a 21 minutes yeah, game yeah it's 7 minutes so and then when you started playing the first game that you played do you remember it like as a professional and how did that happen so i i don't call me call myself as a professional i've always been a p- patron that's right. why i own a team right uh I don't call myself professional no, so because I never we, get paid for it. You have to talk talk us through how did you own a team because first you are here riding a horse, learning how to do it, and then just one day you decide. No, so it's not one day. Of course, yeah. one one year went in just r- learning how to ride. Right. Then there was no polo school, so I went to Argentina to learn. Wow. Yeah. Then I went to America to learn. Then I went to England to learn. Because your passion has surpassed I mean, everything I, else. At that point, money was not the problem, right? So I was like, okay, let me go to the best school. because i don't have time to catch up with these young people and everything right at least let me come to a level where i can play a decent game with them right that's all i wanted because i knew my i'm not going to become the best player right. like that's just ridiculous at 40 but it's unheard of in india for a female polo player to exist right i, I mean even i was wondering while when i went into the game i thought at least there'll be women who like at support at least one yeah and then i didn't see for a while then then the thing is as soon as i came back from argentina and things like that at least i was decent right. then i said i have to be at it so of course i've given almost 11 years in polo 10 11 years from the time i started riding to playing to oh. and then after 2 years i decided that it was always a dream and i told you that when i was young i wanted to be an athlete right but i said you know i have the means and i i think my dream was to have my own team So you said that there were no women who played along with you, right? But did the men take you seriously in the polo field? That's a very uh, interesting uh, subject because I usually don't talk about it. Is But you talk about it behind closed doors. Yes, that's why I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> um, I guess no, they didn't because one, I started very late, so of course they are also wondering that. What you is know she doing I mean, here? Why? Like, what is she trying to do? Right? I mean, of course I was a bad rider. compared to them they all started 5 and 6 and um, no there was i think there was only one or two people who said just keep going just keep going and i knew how to ignore also did it take a toll on you ever it it did you know there was sometimes i just didn't want to go to the field and face it but it was not only that right i mean they were being friendly and i was trying to get friendly so all the wives hated me because this chick has come now who is just trying to you know be the coolest person out yeah, there yeah with all my all the guy friends and i can't tell you it took me two or three years and now all of them are my friends wow that's you so know what nice. i mean even the wives and because it was i don't like to be judged just the way i look or the way i speak because i, I that that sport i needed to get very it, serious it happens with women a lot right the way you speak the way you look you're just just oh you're the yeah yeah, yeah she must be yeah she just come here to she's, hang out yeah, and, and she's, she's talking like, to my husband yeah. and you know having a drink and like whatever but it took a while it took a while but i was adamant i went on training i went on you know playing and then when i had my own team they were like oh my god this woman is just not stopping i'm like either you be my friend Or you you cannot make gonna, me get out of the way. You I'm, can't. Yeah, you can't make me quit. Here. My presence is going to be here. And the same people. Yeah. I hired them to play in my team. Oh my God! This so is then like, it was uh, just like okay. This is like rags <laughs> to riches, you know. Just I came, I conquered, and now here I am. I'm the queen. And and, guys, and now oh, each one of them are so dear to me, yeah. and uh, their wives, their family. I mean, as I said, that it's not even their fault, right? Our our society and the way 
uh, everything I, is viewed. Upbringing is like yeah. this, right? It's a very patriarchal society till now. In exactly, India, right? exactly. Is. I mean, I swear, polo requires white jeans. So if I'm in my tight white jeans, people are looking at my butt, making a comment. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm still going in the game. So it's it and was a little like, oh my God, how do I focus? I mean, somebody's looking at my butt and things like that. But... You know, I just at just that point. Once you, once you get into the game, yes, you're like, I'm just, yes. I'm just here to play. I don't yeah, care about yeah. what is happening around me. And I would finish the game and not then for a while, not even sit with them, have a drink. I would just go home. Right. And then I came back, then go home. So then, then it's slowly even I knew that listen, let me not be too friendly. Right. So I had to work around all that, but at the same time, I mean, I was happy to win their trust. And you know, at one point, I had a very bad fall just before one of my very important game where my team was playing and I remember it was Delhi the horse I, I bent down and the horse came up oh my god I still ha I have nine stitches here and my tooth kind of came shook up. up right so that previous night I was in the hospital with nine stitches and I had to play the next morning I told the doctor I don't care so when I went to play my face was this big it was swollen and it was like I was looking like a Donald Duck or something and they, and that was I think was one of the times that I won their confidence that I'm just not that chick who wears tight clothes or you know looking hot or whatever I am here to play and I did play that game did you win no that's okay <laughs> your spirit won right my point was I had to do this for myself yeah. that I'm not a quitter and you better take me seriously and sometimes your circumstances don't define who you are, right? Yes. You, you just have to play yeah. the game and go. And yeah. Just play the game, yeah. right? And win, right? Wow. And awesome. I, I think it was a very big part on getting polo known. In India. If you know what I mean. Yes. If you do polo India, my name will come. Why? Because I had PR. I was known. That time, polo was not doing any events. Right. The amount of events we have done, I mean, including Etian and we met at the polo field. Oh, wow. And now it's been ten, like more than 10 years. And he's been a part of your life. Yeah. So we, you know, I wanted to get that sport also to the level that maybe I might not play it. Even today, I've just started a team called Rinaldi Under 30 to support all the kids under 30, under 20 to give that platform to promote the sport. And it all just started because you went to see a game. Yeah. It just started It just from started there. from that. Right? And but you know, my inspirations always have been that. They've right. never been direct. You know, if I, want to, if I want to design shoes, I've never seen another shoe right. that I get inspired. I will see nature. I will get inspired by somebody's architecture. Like things like that. So it's always indirect. So you started playing this game. You're now playing beautifully. You, how did the owning a team come into the picture? Right? That's what I said that after two years when I started playing, I trained, I was playing basic, basic games in Jodhpur, in Jaipur, right. all the smaller tournaments. Of course, I've not played very big tournaments. And then it was like a dream. Um, by the way, I'm a very, as I said, I'm a sports freak. Right. The sports that I love watching is basketball right. and American football, right. which is very strange. Yeah, but I is. stayed <laughs> there a lot. And my mentor is Michael Jordan. Like, even before going for polo, I will watch his clip. Right, wow. That just, like, you know, just gets me, like, okay, you know. It inspires It you. inspires to another level. I have every book of his. I have every game of his. And you've read everything. You've seen everything. everything. Like, this is so, you know, of course, owning a basketball team was <laughs> in cross. So, I said, no, you so know. Never I say got, never, Rina. I, never I say know. never. Yeah. I agree with you. But uh, I don't play that sport. Right. I'm like, dude, I'm playing that sport. I have a chance to, like, put this team up. As I said, I had enough money, but I'm not. I didn't want to save and spend it on materialistic thing. Right. This was a dream come true that I could do it at that point, and I was like, you know, I'm going for it. You're going for it. Yeah. And I didn't ask anybody. I didn't take anybody's opinion. I launched the team in Mahalakshmi with a bang, right. and uh, I still remember that that same day, uh, my right hand was fractured. Again? Yeah, I don't ask, there are many. <laughs> so my thumb was fractured and I went to the doctor previous day that it's my team launch, I have to play. He's like, dude, have you gone mad? Because how do you hold the rein and the mallet? Right. I said, uh, okay, let it break. Let it break if I do and then you mend it. He's like, dude, I don't know anybody <laughs> like you. And then I played, I played two chakras. I didn't play all because I just couldn't hold it. Right. And it, there was a plaster here. 
but I just had to do it. I mean, that some people, of course, my friends are like, "You're just crazy. Yeah. You're just mad." I mean, what are you? Inviting? But you need to be mad. You need to have that. That's to what win. I say. And whenever people ask me what is passion, it is that that every day you think about it. If you're willing to go at length at to anything, win. like I was willing to die on the field. Really, I was willing to die. So I don't know. I can't explain that kind of passion. You and what was what was that feeling when you launched your own team and you're like, you know what, you guys all doubted me, but here I am launching my team. I think at that point, no, the happiness was so good that I didn't want to say, see, I proved it. Right. It was more like, dude, I've carved something at least for other women. One, and something impossible. I think that was the most impossible thing. Now when I look back, that I do call myself crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Um, how did you defy the rules of your family rena now you come from a very traditional family yes. right? and how did you defy those rules how so i think uh, it was not even defying um i think i had that in me when rinaldi happened because i became independent and that time i had decided that i want to be so independent that nobody can stop me how when you're young financial you're... independence is very important for women would I you think like that to is the talk main... about it a little bit right because you have done so much and yeah. i would love for you to give advice because as a person who was married at 21 and then you decided being a very supportive family and i really have respect for your ex husband as well because he helped you yes. do yes. a lot of things right yes. but i think certain things that stop women in india right now yes. or otherwise yes. everywhere is financial right. independence Absolutely. right and when that happens it is like oh why was i doing this all along because yeah. i could have just earned it right and exactly. i'm educated but what are your thoughts on it and what would you say to the new gen z who is like spoilt yeah. and they get everything on a platter right Absolutely. what would you tell them if that money is not there anymore i think that's why i did what i did is that i couldn't fulfill like sports or music or anything away like passion related which maybe women aren't supposed to do so f- that's why i think i put my whole resource in making money first because i knew that if i didn't have it i don't think i mean i wouldn't have that respect and that you every time i would have to be dependent on, on like yeah. like example going to argentina and just like going for a polo school right. i mean who will go to back it when you not you can't i mean nobody would have believed right so for me it was also that and i tell everybody is that yes financial support or somebody who has finance are supporting you um sometimes i do see a lot of parents supporting their children and giving everything they want for their passion so then you are fine but otherwise make your money first because then you'll have the independence i think this is very important because everybody has a lot of different passions right now yeah. but you just can't fulfill all of them yeah, yeah. have a steady state of income right. and then go and yeah because how will else you're going to fulfill your passion you right. know so you do need somebody or the other or i'm not saying at 21 i had full financial thing it right. took me time and i told you right i mean i took everything much later when i had the financial support where my my own support where i didn't have to ask so can i go to the school or can i learn this i mean even with djing right i mean i went to amsterdam i went to ibiza school so oh, you did yeah because I, i i believe that let's go to the best school when i was a program i went to harvard i want to go to the best school and learn the best but you need money i think uh, you always need to be a very good student throughout your life yes to be able to learn absolutely and, and you, you keep learning and right. you keep teaching yourself because you can't stop you can't stop so from being a polo player and there was this article of in 2015 that i read of you which said that i have made a lot of sacrifices to play polo yeah. i don't have time for anything else and yeah. yet here you are yeah and now you are an acclaimed dj your uh, your uh, stage name is viking souls and yeah. we are going to talk about it because that that really intrigued me uh, from like i didn't know you were a programmer because it's not present anyway yeah, so yeah, now yeah. I'm it just was just a, to... it was just two three it was a phase where at that point computers were coming up and being a programmer was the coolest thing was no it's like you make a lot of money yeah and i means i was a total geek like i used to love studying and i just thought that it was so cool right programming your own thing you can make your own app you can make your own website and i thought that it will take me far to make money also right money has always been a constant source of uh, of uh, uh, how do i how do i define it right something that you always wanted in your life right you wanted to work for money i don't so work for money at all right. but i think money was very important to for my path to get easier 
to reach somewhere because I knew that I came from a little conservative society, uh, family where I would have to have my own to do my own. Right. But otherwise, I don't, I didn't become DJ so that I get money. Right. I didn't become a shoe designer so that I make money. I first put in all my resource and my passion, work hard. Money has always followed. Money has always followed. That's amazing, right? So, two very stark, uh, one being a DJ, the other being a polo player, very stark careers in nature, right? And how does that happen? Like, this is something, this is sort of some, it feels like it's made up. That this woman out here sitting right in front of me has done literally everything. And how did that happen? And why did you choose being a DJ post being a polo player? I, you are a polo player, continue being a polo player. But then how did DJ happen? So 2019 when I shot, then of course we all know 2021 was COVID. I couldn't play polo. I couldn't design shoes. I think we were all stuck at home. At 21, um, so 19, I thought... I was, I don't want to say this because you're going to be like, um, I wanted to get music in my life. and just, I, just, Do you just get these thoughts that today I want to do this? And you just, just go ahead. I think it just comes to me right. in front of me. Like I'm 19, I went, I moved 17, 18, I moved to Delhi right. to open a restaurant. Right. Uh, a polo oriented Deep restaurant right. where somebody said that we want you to be the face of it and then I invested a little and that restaurant never opened for whatever reason and where I was staying was a drum room and a piano room okay. like you know I think now big buildings have all these facilities right. now the restaurant didn't open I was like oh my god I just wasted my whole year at the same time I was playing in Delhi little polo right. and my company was going on where I used to make a lot of boots and all for polo right. so factory was running now automated so I said okay never mind I'll go then when I'll it didn't open another open, stream I'll yeah I want to be a so, restaurant on you oh. and I started learning the drums because I had a lot of free time right the restaurant was not opening I was in Delhi polo was only one hour a day so I said and I always loved instrument because when I was young, my mother taught me piano. It means she sent me to classes just because right. of, and I became a drummer. So for a while, I said, "Oh wow, you know." It, I just think that it was natural as a music person. I caught it up very fast. Now and you you were learning it professionally. It was yes, just not yes. For fun. I you, performed you, with a DJs and do all. Do you do anything for fun, or everything is to, supposed to be done? I don't know, and I think that's what I'm thinking now in life. <laughs> that why do I take everything so seriously and go so deep? But I don't know why. But that's amazing. Yeah, right? it just it doesn't. I didn't think of it like that, but then it just becomes good, and I think I spend a lot of time giving, uh, like working hard at it. Right. And then that didn't last for very long because, as you said, as I told you, 2021 came and COVID came, I think everything seemed as if like everything you, is over. Were you in Delhi that time? You no, shifted. then I moved 2019. Yeah. I thought of being a DJ where I said, I'll just learn a little, which gives me enough to combine my drumming with my music. Right. So it was not to be a DJ. It was just more like I can make my own sounds. I went to Amsterdam, came back. I did a uh, three, four months course, a basic, came back and uh, then COVID. So I was like, I don't know, I just wasted my time doing this because now I'm going to die and so is everybody. <laughs> it was very funny, right? It's like, oh my God, this was the end. This is the end, right? Uh, can't play polo, can't do anything. Didn't see a human for three months because I stay alone. Um, and then 21, Goa was open, like a little, you know, and yeah. I was like, oh my God, the second wave is coming. I better run because I, I'm, a, I'm an outdoor person. I'm a, you know, I need people. I moved to Goa to actually pursue the DJ and the music thing. And then that was the time that Goa went into lockdown. Like the, the, the second the wave, second wave yeah. Goa was hit. And I reached there, I had one gig and then there was a second lockdown. So I was like, dude, I think I'm chasing a dream which it's is always true. giving me, a universe is telling me it's not for you. Yeah. So I had given up, like I'm like, okay, anyways, not that I was trying to become like a big DJ. I thought just a music sense for fun because right. Rinaldi was shut. I had too much time on hand. And I couldn't play. And you can't sit. And I couldn't play polo, right? Yeah. Because of COVID, we were not allowed in the race course. So you can't do anything. You cannot sit at home. You have to do something. You have to do something. To, right. And that's where I was like, I failed in that restaurant. I couldn't, I, I, I really chased my failure also. You do? I'm like, yeah. So then I was like, okay, fine. I'll open a restaurant. 
do you beat yourself often when it when it comes to failure like oh why did that fail or i have to win i have to try again yeah. because yeah, people do. You, usually people don't do that once you have failed or something like acha okay yaar is no done. i do i do i just i feel then the power is more it's like i feel now i will find a way i will work maybe 20 hours and i i don't know what it is but 17 i failed for the restaurant where they had really taken my money and cheated me and didn't open the restaurant so i was like now i have nothing else to do so i saw a place because i had you know one whole year went in that covid right so i found a place and uh, 22 february okay? i opened my own restaurant which was like a tribal theme and i always liked and i wanted to support music musicians so f- uh, we ran the restaurant for one and a half years where we i supported at least 200 live musicians what is very interesting about you reena and i must say this out loud is whenever you are chasing your passion you always ensure that people around you also benefit from it i mean you have to lift others when you are rising right you have to i mean that is something that i feel comes from my parents also they've always told me that if you make 10 make sure that two goes to somebody who needs it wow you know or just keep ra- helping people because you know in india if you know half the people are so jealous that they're always trying to pull you pull down pull you down right absolutely so there are very few people who believe that we have if i'm rising i will take you like help others also it's not right. like i only want to rise right so mm-hmm. it, it is just i think it's in my blood and what was your experience of opening a restaurant there it was right? the best it was the best you know because i couldn't as i said i thought dj is over polo so in tw- 19 also um, in 2020 sorry my last game that i played was uh, women's cup oh wow which i also did i called foreigners and uh, you wanted to show them that this is a yeah, culture of india yeah women's team is yeah. here so the lot of indian girls could be inspired right and after that my for my um fall or the uh, was so bad that i broke uh, four of my ribs and four of my vertebrae oh my god so being on a horse at that point seemed impossible my doctor said don't even think about it because it is a miracle that you are not paralyzed so i i and it still did, didn't deter you from yeah i mean i haven't i haven't started yet so it it took me a year and a half to heal and then uh, i do you, i get do you any time give up when it all of this no happens? i'll get back on the horse by next month you will. <laughs> I will i will but now i won't play like uh, hard games because you know i don't want to be in a wheelchair for sure right. and um, so then i was healing myself while the restaurant and everything because i knew that i couldn't go back to polo i had to give it time and then uh, music happened there and from there i said you know what i, I have learned a little djing in my own restaurant let me again start playing with the musicians i you know i had this fusion thing in my mind so what i did is i just practiced with them and i called each musician and said why don't you jam with me right and from there the sounds became good people started loving it people are like dude the sitar came i like the tabla and sitar and i felt like the live musicians were dying Right. with a lot of electronic and technology and auto auto tuning and everything was sort of yes. taking away the and because fun. i told you that i did kathak and bharatnatyam right. classical is actually my base right very strong so i said let's see how it sounds let's play techno and get the sitar and i would play techno and get tabla wow and it was just sounding good and i was like dude this is so cool and i just got really inspired myself because these musicians were so good I mean people from russia uh people from poland they are coming and jamming you uk and they were ju- like you know again they are also living in goa because goa had that kind of culture and we were jamming in my restaurant and from there i still remember titli goa oh, called yes. me and i got my first gig really yeah i mean i had few gigs before doing commercial and all but you know how it was it was like five people in the And did that ever deter you five people in the audience No no I had one sometimes I, the first one of my first when I just became and I was trying it was just me and my friend Really and I I was like don't take any videos <laughs> Were you not sad about no, it No no I didn't you know I really believe that no matter whatever age no matter who I am when I start a new I am a beginner You are a beginner So you have to start from scratch Nobody is going to come watch Nobody, my show Nobody yeah and I don't want it also otherwise I'll take it for granted and maybe I won't work hard Wow because everything I had to work hard everything nothing has come easy to me so what really excites me reena about this conversation that i'm ha- uh, that i'm having with you is that 
your failures don't deter you at all right and that's beautiful so the restaurant bit one and a half years of running the restaurant and then you decided to shut it yeah why uh goa is a little tricky okay and it's getting more trickier um i had a lot of issues with my landlord okay. and that a lot of people had told me and warned me but when my relation with the landlord started it was very good then suddenly in december of 22 uh, they started a new rule where you have to music for the outside uh, place has to shut at 10 o'clock my whole bar and restaurant was based on this live performance and music right now if i shut music at 10 o'clock nobody's going to come nobody's still we survived and i said no you know but my landlord could not waver and i had only 6000 of open air right so i couldn't build like a closed so we were in a fix with that but then after things got little better also i didn't get support from my landlord and I, i i was alone and i don't think i could fight that battle because of course they own the land and right. the lease was going on so i think it was something that i couldn't fight more than 6 months so by june 23 that i just decided that is it, i can't run it like that because 10 o'clock music shuts and if he was supporting me i could have prolonged till 12 right but that didn't happen and then was that something that it was very sad because you know i think building that and doing my music with it and supporting so many musicians it was a dream come true you know you you had actually built a community of musicians exactly right? i mean yeah. you know having 200 people perform at my venue was something that it was a dream come really a dream come true so to shut that was very very sad and that and when you say that 200 people who had come for your uh, different uh, different to, yeah yeah different did you you there must be some monetary involved right that you used to take some money from them to perform the gig no no i used to pay them you used to pay them yeah money. like they are performing like right. 8 to 10 while people are having dinner it right. was a whole jungle theme right. like a tribal theme so every we and people loved gigs. your restaurant Oh my god I mean still people tell me that please reopen it it was so beautiful because we really created like a jungle right a safe space for people to come listen to music yeah. have good lunch yeah. have good dinner and just Absolutely. enjoy themselves enjoy right? cocktails and yeah it was just uh, but you never wanted to start it again in goa you know restaurant business was very new to me right. and uh, i had put in a lot of money creating that and everything so when that didn't work i don't think that it was wise even from a business point of view not being a chef not being you know bartender i think there were glitches to run a full fledged restaurant without good partners right so to restart i would have had to you know kind of and plus it also confined me in sense that you had i had to be at the restaurant most of the time so i couldn't go out and play music right when the music scene for me started getting better and this happened i just took it as an you know thing that it's okay i got one and a half years to run something beautiful that i dreamed of that i don't want to start again and be confined right. i want to go out and play music and see more life and you know kind of pursue the dj right. career and the first gig that you mentioned was uh, you you and your friend alone right it didn't deter you again you no. were like okay it's okay there will yeah. be no crowd and There'll then the more. second and third and yeah four. and then it started growing and people started calling me for commercial music and all but i wanted to play techno and that's what got me to go out right and when i played one techno and then it got shut then again i restarted from totem right. so april 23 or 20 yeah april 23 22 sorry i slowly slowly started Play. you know playing with one musician then i started playing from all my staff and then slowly slowly it started going did you get get feedback which is not that good that oh i we were not enjoying this yeah music. like of course i would get like no this set uh, this time it was just sounding off with the violin okay because i you know i didn't know how it would sound right. but it was a lot of a lot of experimentation experiment there. which i could do it in my restaurant right i mean there's no way somebody could have hired me and i'm like let me experiment right so it got me going from there you it is got the confidence that hey this is working yes. i can make it work and i, I can make it better exactly right? and then goa started calling me as a Tolly Tutli was one of the first people who believed in me, and from Tutli sunsets to different. And I mean, last year, so June, I would say June twenty three, I took it on. After shutting the restaurant, I took it up full time. Right. And then October twenty three was uh, I launched my Totem Tribe. 
Wow. And how was that experience of launching it? And oh my God, it was so cool because it is a whole uh, experience, music, musical experience with uh, seven people, with tribal dancers, with why fire did, Why did you choose tribal? Why did you choose Viking Souls as your stage So name? Viking Soul came later. Uh, it was... Um, Tribal from the restaurant. Right. One and a half years, I wasn't done with tribal, if right. you know what I mean. I had so many things. I went to Africa uh, in 22 October. That's where Afro House, I heard. You and always get inspired by nature. You always get inspired by things around you, right? Yeah, yeah. You go there and it's just like the... Universe. I went for a birthday trip really? to Africa with my best friend, few friends of us and I was sitting one day and not going to sightseeing because I just wanted to chill and that's when I heard Afro House. I was like, what is this music? I started shazamming. I didn't know there was a genre called Afro House. Right. And I was like, dude, this sounds so tribal, so this, so this. And then more I went into the music and I said, people don't play that much uh, in, in India. Let me introduce this to you. Yeah, so I play a lot of tribal Afro house techno. Okay. Wow, I don't know what that means because I've not heard you, yeah. but I need to be there yes. to hear that. Yes, coming for my next event. Yes, and then when that happened and you started the Titli gig, how was it? Were you excited? Were you nervous? Do you ever get nervous? Of course, you I know? and but I love that nervous. I right. love that butterflies. Right. Where you're going like for your first exam and all that. <laughs> so how was your experience? It was of very good. It was very, as I said, that of course, you know, when you come as a beginner, you're trying different things, whether this is going to work, or how people are going to react. But I think... People started reacting well and I started combining tabla, then I started combining sitar, violin, saxophone and it just started growing and people started, so from last October, um, in the it was the best season in Goa for us. We played it, I played it every, every gig, right? Uh, and now you're like, are you like one of the most wanted DJs? In, I won't say that. Right. I mean, it's not a, yet. It is a very competitive, but I'm making my niche, right? You know, because I feel that you have to make your niche when you're in a very competitive uh, industry. So one of the studies that I did while I was researching about you was that usually and this is what the market stats tell me women DJ get uh, the female DJs get twice the gig as male ones, but they get paid less. Is that true? See, as I said, I'm very new. Right. And uh, I don't think I have done full research on that. Right. I just go on my path. I do my best. I don't know who's getting paid and who's not. I don't know which is male, what is female. You don't. You are like, I don't I know. Ju I'm I mean, just going to play music. I'll have to, I'll basically tell you, I went to Ibiza. I just went to Ibiza last year to do my advanced course after I got Titli and all. And I said, okay, you know. This I'll, is getting serious now. Yeah, because I had only done a basic course from Amsterdam and you go bo go back being a student yeah I, ha I mean I had to you know right. because again DJ world starts at 16 15 years old who start becoming DJs and then they grow right so when I went I mean I, I was in a class of uh, 10 people ranging from 17 to 25 Wow. So I told them, you will, uh, everybody was, uh, I am this year, this many years old and I am this and I am coming from this country. Mm -hmm. I, when I got up, I said, I'm coming from India and you will ask my age when the course is over. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am sure that everyone cla clapped and that was like, uh, the yeah. ice was broken there and everyone But spoke. it also gave me, it was like nobody made me feel funny or I, I, you know, we all like work together, we all, you know, studied together. And uh, even today we are friends and they follow me and they say, oh, you're playing here, yeah. that's so cool. Have you played any gig outside of India now? Not yes, I've played in Amsterdam also, or I've played in Ibiza, I've played in Thailand. Um, and I hope to play more and more in other countries. Yeah. As I said that right now, I'm also growing. I also need to learn more. I need to get better. I need to get my sound out in India. And India is really doing well for me. So for now, of course, I'm focusing, but then Dubai is on the list. Uh, Italy is on the list. So things will start happening. Your dreams just don't stop. You're like, I have to grow. If you and stop have, dreaming, and then what, is, what, what would you look forward to? Right. And it's just that it started. And what's very interesting in your entire story is that you go to a place and how it started. Right? Like your mom started making you do Bharat Natyam, Kathak. And then sort of that comes right now. It entwines with your music and you're getting it out I of mean, the I can world, only right? tell people that knowledge never gets wasted. Learn wherever you get a chance, learn everything. 
and then you never know in life when it will come there, there was a bill gates interview that i was uh, looking at a couple of days back where he says the same thing he said you know even though i'm a dropout i have learned i've always been a student and that sort of reminds me of you right now till you die you have to be a student yeah. because the day you feel i know it all you're done you're done and how do you take space uh, reena that that's something that i would want you to tell us to everyone who's listening to this right how do you take space make space for yourself in this very crowded environment like being a dj is again unheard of for being a woman i don't know i i probably know a couple of female dj's exactly. right i do not know women who are who want to take that up as a profession yeah. because um, of a lot of things right, right. is it it's safety it's what the it's world it's true it's true and uh, i mean for me also like i don't think of male and female most of the time now that i've overcome that with polo and other things but um i think the best thing about being a dj is uh, making people dance i mean i am a dj only because i can make people happy and i play music and people are dancing i mean that joy is i can't even tell you right yeah it's just it gives beautiful. you another high right you are yeah like it is it literally a high which like it takes me 3 4 hours after a gig to get over it really yeah it's so it's so amazing like people are dancing with your music and they're happy and smiling and i mean how how can it get better wow so then again my question comes to you right how do you take space how do you yeah. make it a very inclusive environment for anyone who wants to join like there are young people watching this right now right so how do you make it happen for them what are you doing in your power to make it happen for them for new musicians i think uh, of course safety does count but i think just um, for me it was that i never took it as oh it's unsafe or anything but i think it's more like do your job uh, don't take this profession where oh you can drink as much as you want you can do drugs and you can party i mean i don't even have a sip of alcohol when i'm playing right because it's work so if you take it seriously that people will take you seriously and your work will take you seriously because one is respect and second is people think oh being a dj means is all party yeah that's what everyone yeah. thinks about i it. mean th- I think today after being a DJ I now respect so many more DJs because it is always per, you know perceived that oh this is just like oh you just oh, come and just, put yeah. your pen drive and just play music and you're going to have drugs and there's going yeah. to be alcohol yeah oh it's going to be so much party and we all get together i mean oh my god i mean before my gig 3 days i take just to make my songs and match the keys and analyze and it's so much hard work and you also have to change according to what the audience is feeling right absolutely right. I mean there's so many variables that, that you know you have to take care of that today I understand it. So with the highest of highs you have been like you've been a DJ, a polo player, uh, the owner of a company or a fitness freak uh you are a restaurant owner. You were a restaurant owner but never say never. And with the highest of highs comes lows, right? Was yeah. there was there a point of time in your life you're like I just want to quit. I don't want to do this anymore. is reena shah does reena shah ever feel the need to i think it's always i think no matter what i have done i have had to overcome that but i have been in my lows also very low where like i'm like like i, I, I think i should just leave it and i'm not going to say very far i mean just last month or whatever uh being a new dj like um, i was not getting a gig like nobody's really calling me for a gig and i'm like telling my manager that to what's going on maybe i'm not playing the right music or maybe, maybe I'm, i'm not good enough maybe i'm not good enough and maybe do you think i should pursue it or and uh, even cried like you know i'm like nobody's calling me for a gig maybe i should just do it for free i you know what i mean because of course this is my first year and then you just get over it I have to get over it and I'm like okay what do you want to do you really I mean I literally talk to myself as like there's a second person I'm a gemini anyways <laughs> and I'm like okay you want to quit and then what and then you want to do this and then I have a whole tribe I'm like if I'm going to quit what is my tribe going to do right. I mean what am I going to say that okay we don't have a gig and sometimes of course they also give me Push, like don't yeah. worry and we'll do it and then my manager says and I'm saying like no no my friends but it comes with this creative field right when you are in a creative field you always uh, yeah. feel because somebody is going to replace you always right of course of course i not even replace a competition right yeah. i i think what i'm trying to create what is replace i mean i never like to use that word replace right. unless you're doing something identical right 
right so we're all trying to make our own noise and voice and everything but self doubt is without that i don't think that you can push yourself more because it's a part and parcel of everything you do and how do you come out of it that's what i'm saying i i kind of go to the gym okay. i will surround myself i'll change the environment for a bit i will uh, but you will not sit and sulk right because that is what no, people no. do they are like wallowing in their self no I, the thing is i think by now i know how to overcome right because it happens so many times in so many industries and so many things that i know like get up and go this and or cry it out also do ghanta baith ke ro ro lo ha after that watch oh, what i watch on netflix is has to be inspiring i watch right. every sports movie or something that is real story right. i don't i don't see otherwise anything right. i'll watch some like michael jordan last dance i keep watching every episode then i'm back You're back. You're yeah, like, I'm back. Hey, I'm like, dude, he's not quit so much. Why should I? He has yeah. changed his field so many times, and he's not quit. And why should I? Exactly. Wow. I think that's really inspiring because uh, people tend to wallow in their self pity. They're like, "Arey, ab to nahi hoga." You know, just let's just quit. Let me go find another one. But you're not that. No, right? no. At least give it your best. You are literally like jack of all trades and master of all trades. You are, you are one of. I won't. That's what I'm saying. I don't even view it that way. I just feel that music and sports were my first love. Why in school and maybe I'm getting this opportunity in my life to fulfill it. I can't let it go because I cannot be on my deathbed and say I should have done it, but I didn't. Yeah, because you want to live a full life. Full you life. You have done everything. You have done all the mistakes possible, and you are yes, supremely happy about it. Exactly. And who has who has been your biggest cheerleader in all of this? So I tell you, um, I don't think that I have one biggest cheerleader. Every time in my life, in whatever I did, in different I, phases. I had somebody who just came as an angel or mentor you can say but I never had one mentor completely um they just came at a point where the universe has just sent to push and then it sails do you believe in the power of manifestation I do which I didn't be- be- earlier I don't manif I-, I don't sit and manifest but I feel that things have come true to me when I have wanted them really purely from the soul from the gut without any materialistic want right. then it has come can you give an example of that if you do something i, I think the biggest time when i understood manifestation was 2021 when i moved to goa and the lockdown happened it was so weird it's like i wanted to it was a big storm 3 days storm and i was just in that storm only i was thinking like It would be so nice to see peacocks. I'm not kidding you. I went out. There were ten peacocks in Goa. In Goa, when the storm is there, then the, the after the storm got over, I was like, it'll be so beautiful. I mean, like, and it was just. I think it was just purely wanting that. It was like I wish I see the best sunset. I mean, I swear, it was just weird. And then I was, I I was even questioning it that what is happening? Maybe I should ask for something materialistic and see. Yeah, that never happens. But what I'm trying to say is like even with gigs. I w- you won't believe it. It was just a month back. I wanted to play at this club called Illusion Hyderabad. Right. I mean, you know, I swear they were not picking up my phone, my managers Instagramming. I'm like, dude, it's not happening. But I want to play. I do. I can't tell you. In two weeks, I got a call. Oh, do you want to play? Like, do you want to play from my agent? And you had it, goosebumps. You still I mean, have I goosebumps. I literally, I w- I thought it was the best gig ever. Really? The sound, I felt like a star playing at like Illusion Club. And so, I think I think manifestation truly works when you when you want it deep inside as you said, right? You yeah, don't want yeah. any monetary yeah. control over it. You don't want oh I don't want million dollars. No, I and I, at that gig I would have played free also because really? I just was like wow, it would be so cool because every time I was seeing on Instagram the lights the everything was just so perfect that i just never got that chance because of course i'm new right now i'm not going to like i still have so many clubs who are not even picking up my phone or even messaging me maybe after that inshallah who knows yeah yeah i mean see it's a it's a part of the growth it's right. a process and if i try to cut that process it it is only going to be bad for me Success never comes easy, right, Rina? No, it, it, it doesn't. doesn't. You have to work really, really hard. And what yeah. we see on TV, or you see, and, and and they say that, oh, these are nepo kids, or you know, nepotism. But nepotism also, you have to work really, like really hard. Yeah, people give you a chance, but right. they are not acting for you. Right. They are not. You know, you're still on that stage and doing. So people give chances means doesn't mean every everybody gets that chance. Right. Whether you're poor, whether you're rich, it doesn't matter. And just because you got a chance doesn't mean 
that you have cut the line it is that chances come in very different forms and then it's up to you to ensure that you win that chance right? absolutely then, absolutely are you a spiritual person because one of your reels that i saw you were in varanasi getting yeah, your yeah i am a very spiritual person i used to be religious yeah and uh, i think a what lot what is the difference between religious and being spiritual i mean i really, i was a jain i was very very religious going to the temple every day puja i mean and i don't say it's a bad or a good it's just that things in my life made me see it differently that uh, i think i started knowing that religion is about being a good person now and being spiritual is more like you know coming one with your soul and honestly i think my biggest religion is that how every day i become a better person and help others help others right yeah 100% well. so rina how do you do it all and that that has to be my last question for this podcast before we have a fun round <laughs> so my last question for you how does someone become a fashion entrepreneur a polo player a dj a restaurant owner do a ted talk and be supremely inspiring to people around you also uplift so many people i mean that's that's probably what i'm going to take away from this podcast today was how beautifully you create a community everywhere you go Thank and you. i don't think you realize this rena but every conversation that we have had you have spoken about polo you know i got a polo team but people started you know it was so inspiring i called people because i wanted people to see women playing it yes. was you have never spoken about yourself you have always spoken about the community so yes how do you do it all rena and i think you know biggest thing is that i have sacrificed a lot i really like you ask me for my school time i don't have any fun stories that others have that i went on a trip with my friends and you know we did this masti we were partying we, in amsterdam yeah. and then we i mean no from yacht. till 21 i don't think uh, i even sipped alcohol i never i have I, i had a curfew and i actually believe that my that was the best thing my mother did that 11:30 curfew i've never seen a club i i mean i don't have any fun story i mean fun stories it, it's and it's hard to believe that yeah, yeah but today i can see that where it has taken me and even to raven playing polo i have lost friends um social gatherings uh, dating I I mean my point is I've always prioritized certain things that I know that it was come late in my life I have to be grateful and I have to work very hard and I think if I have to put all of this in a sum it is the sacrifices and my discipline of from childhood to now has got me this far wow now after dj what is that thing that you're going to do now i'm really excited to know because i don't see, i think i think see, this tomorrow i think you're going to be flying a plane i for, for <laughs> all i know you can do that you have that in you so what what is that next thing i think this music is um, going to take a while and i think it's a beautiful journey where i'm taking the tribe i want to go international so i know it's going to take a lot of you know years where i'm going to build it so i i never plan what i'm going to take to be very honest i have never i never planned i'm going to it just come to you it just come to me but i think i definitely want my this journey to more now give back to the community give back to the youngsters so for me it is very important that of course music stays is giving me a lot of beautiful freedom but at the same time uh, i am involved uh, with a lot of organizations and charitable stuff where i can be a part or uh, maybe help uh, sports Uh, in a certain way to encourage young kids to become better athletes uh in in polo or any other sports which i am now talking to few organizations who can take me on board wow um as i said giving back giving you know back, yes, i have got so been. much and i'm very grateful that uh, you know to have that opportunity to also even fulfill your dreams so maybe i can fulfill other people with people's. someone with someone who has gotten so much in her life right and to give back is i think beautiful and i think thank you reena for being thank here thank you so much for having doors. me and your story is beautiful and so inspiring it's right? so lovely talking to you so reena we're going to play a very fun game with you it's called myth or fact i'm going to ask you a question and you have to tell me and you have to also give your opinion on it right okay, okay. so first question is being a fashion entrepreneur today is more about social media than actual skills fact yeah today today yeah and what would you do if you had to open your brand again today I mean oh my god that scares me that is why I'm not reopening because I think everything is so social media oriented and not like I just feel today when I see I mean a person who might not be as creative is doing much better than the person who's actually creative right because of social media and social the way media is how how is pursued and how much can you boost 
that post i mean I, although i'm so new to this world in terms of i'm still coping up with that social media thing right okay second question polo is a sport only to be played by princely people that's not true because not there are no more princes right i mean there are no more prince and a lot of uh, laymen also play it but of course it is for the elite or for a very small segment because it's expensive it's expensive right okay yeah. the horse is more important than the rider always really always oh yeah. my god i don't think i could have done half of my play without my horse your horse has to love you back yes and your if if he doesn't want to play she will throw me really yeah wow but of course it's a it's i would say horse and a rider are like synced you have to sync with your horse and the horse has to sync with you so that's a journey that also you have to take right you have, you to, have to so i'm not saying oh the rider has nothing to do with it but i'm saying the rider has to communicate to the horse and then the horse understands and and now i mean no more i've that's why it's a beautiful sport right because even if you just ride horses it's like how you're sinking with the horse and more you sink with the horse what horse gives you back it's like a beautiful rhythm isn't it it is just fabulous i mean in the middle of the game i'm like come on let's score the goal <laughs> bella come on let's go and she will <laughs> she will because she's listening to that music that you're throwing at her great last question before we wrap up yeah you need to be lucky to be successful i used to think that quite a bit when you see other people like getting it very easy but i think uh, more and more i grow up i think that luck has a maybe sometimes a very small part but luck, everybody is lucky in some phase of their life and unlucky in some phase right. so you just keep working hard maybe you have to given maybe few years more and the luck will change luck will change wow i think that so is so i think that is how it works but right. hard work is hard work hard work is hard work great i think that's an end of our beautiful episode and thank you reena for being thank here. you so much for having me this was supremely inspiring and back up okay yeah <laughs>